Armed with just a few bits of personal information, the con artist pretends to be you. She created accounts for me at all these credit cards. Then I was locked down. In fact, once your identity is stolen, the con artist becomes you. It's a lot easier for me to prove that I'm you to get your money than it is for you to prove that it wasn't you that spent that money. Identity thieves steal from cars, homes, and right from your mailbox. 99% of debit cards that I used were stolen out of mailboxes. They drain bank accounts, destroy your credit, and generate piles of fraudulent debt. One year working with the two partners that I had, we took in about $3 million in merchandise and a $1 million in cash. But for victims, the loss is far beyond financial. I was so tired of it never ending. Fraud investigators agree. Identity theft is epidemic, and no one is immune. The average person will become a victim of identity theft at least once in their lifetime. So how do you avoid becoming an identity theft victim? To find out, we went to the source. Meet Alice, not her real name. She's a convicted identity thief, as is Kevin, not his real name either. Alice and Kevin are experts because they're part of the underworld of identity thieves, most with one thing in common. My drug use was 100% a driving factor for why I did crime. When we first meet Alice, she's detoxed from meth addiction and in jail on seven counts of identity theft. After her release, as part of her probation program, she agreed to be our guide on a crime scene tour. Okay. okay. To protect Alice's identity, she's wearing a disguise. Let's our tour shit. takes us to parking lots, through city streets, quiet neighborhoods, regular places where people do regular things. Turn right here. This is uh, your standard gym parking lot. This all hours gym parking lot is perfect for car prowls. Why? Because while people are working out, they aren't exercising good sense by leaving valuables in their car. And so we're sitting in the parking garage just waiting for somebody to make a mistake. They also uh, put their laptops in the trunk is a very common thing. And we watch them put their laptops in the trunk. This is obviously a man's car. We'd probably hit that one for sure because he probably left his wallet in the glove box. Um, and guys have a tendency to put their pin numbers or leave their social security cards and that kind of stuff in their wallet. See, so like this lady is going into the gym and she doesn't have anything with her. She's putting her stuff in the back and leaving to go in the gym. And so we hit that car real quick. And if you think security guards and cameras are a deterrent, think again. This is the security guy's truck. We've broken into that twice. He doesn't even lock his door. <laughs> uh, it does say that there's cameras, but there are in fact no cameras. We've checked. Next, it's one-stop stealing at a busy, multi-level shopping garage. Each time a car is loaded up with purchases, someone is watching. Okay, so this is great because people are parking, they're going and shopping. It's got multiple different stores uh, accessible from the parking garage. So Yeah, so see, like this guy, uh, he could be putting all of his stuff in his uh, vehicle and then going down to another store because he doesn't want to take it around with him. He can't take the other cart with him. Minivans are great because people leave all kinds of stuff in minivans. Oh, this Ford truck could get into that really easy. Okay, stop. Um, this right here, see, they've got their windows down. I can reach my arm in there and open that. So I'm going to hit that even if I don't think there's anything in it. Another example of a cash cow for thieves is a zoo parking lot. That's because it's full of tourists and distracted parents who are sure to be away from their car for hours. Out-of-state plates are great because people come with a lot of money. <laughs> Anybody with a stroller is a good mark because they don't want to carry all their stuff with them. They should, they put their purse in the trunk and a baby stroller comes out and they're good to go. Okay, see the back of this car has got a bunch of stuff in the back, yeah. right? Yeah. All right. And it's also got the carrier on top. And look at that. You know a family's traveling in that. It's got luggage in it. It's probably got a laptop in it. It's got a ton of stuff. Plus, I could sit and watch these people park and open their back of their car so I could see everything in it and whether I want anything in it or not. The last leg of our tour takes us to unsecured mailboxes. For identity thieves, they're a gold mine. These people obviously don't check their mail often, and if they do, look at there's a little packet thing right in front, that envelope, that manila envelope. That's got my attention right away. It's called mailboxing, slang for stealing from mailboxes. 
For identity thieves, your red flag is a green light to grab outgoing mail. Somebody will be in the car and will actually flag and the car will stop immediately. Well, we know what that means. And so outgoing mail is really good for um, getting uh, bank account numbers and things of that sort uh, because you send your outgoing checks um, to make payments on things. And if your mailbox isn't locked, delivered mail contains bank statements, credit card offers, tax forms, once they get your information and create their fake identity, identity thieves can steal money you don't even have. Right now, what we see most is ID thieves opening new accounts instead of just draining your current or existing bank account. Mafe Rahul is a senior deputy prosecuting attorney specializing in identity theft and other economic crimes. She says identity thieves steal not just your money, but any of your credit they can find. The thieves then rush to convert your credit to cash. A lot of times we first learn of suspect because they are caught on video using a victim's credit card or a victim's ID. I would say that the, the main thing that you use other people's credit for is to buy things that you know that you can sell. Department stores were really good because department stores have gold. Gold is, is, is an asset that can be immediately turned into cash. As part of a crime ring, Kevin was the master ID maker. Raul shows us a sampling of his talent. He says he made between fifty dollars to $100,000 a month in identity theft. Within any identity theft ring, people do tend to specialize. Typically, there's somebody who does the fake identifications, somebody else who will do the online IT, if you will, types of crime, or somebody else who will do the stealing of the information through car prowls, through burglaries of homes, or uh, through stealing mail from mailboxes. Kevin was busted after setting up shop at a cheap motel. Inside, police found a virtual fake ID factory. Helen, not her real name, is one of Alice's yeah, victims. Because Helen didn't monitor her bank accounts, credit cards, or credit reports online, Alice moved in for the kill. I couldn't even prove that I was who I was because she had taken so much. She had taken my social security number, my mother's maiden name, and she had made herself into me. And I really put her through the ringer. I knew everything about her. And what I didn't know, I changed to what I wanted it to be. And then I took over everything. And she didn't even know. I registered her online for American Express. I issued new cards. Um, I changed the address. I got a full background credit report on her because they have that credit monitoring service. So I just signed her up and, uh, and printed out everything I needed to know and took over her whole life. Registered her on all three uh, credit bureaus that she wasn't ever registered on, changed background information, changed her work history, changed her phone numbers. I changed everything. I held her mail. Um, I was her, and, and she couldn't prove that I wasn't. As with most identity theft victims, by the time Helen caught on, it was too late. What I found out when she went online and created accounts for me at all these credit cards, then I was locked out because I didn't know any of the information and she had all her information in there. And she was able to order new credit cards for my accounts. When Alice was finally arrested, she had 10 fake IDs in her purse, including Helen's. She had racked up thousands of dollars in debt and Helen continues to pay the price. Every time I thought it was over, she would do something again to disrupt my life. This has affected my credit score by lowering it 150 points. It's very hard for me to get credit now. While you can't protect yourself 100%, you can take effective steps to safeguard your information from exploitation by thieves. Criminals are looking for easy targets, so don't make it easy to target you. Here are some safety tips, both high-tech and low-tech. For the high-tech, Establish online access to your accounts and monitor them. Set up passwords to access your phone and computers so thieves can't easily access the information stored inside. And don't conduct sensitive transactions like banking, shopping, or managing investments on public Wi-Fi. Wait till you're home on a secure network. And for low-tech safety measures, have a locking mailbox. Don't leave sources of your personal information in your car. This includes computers and phones and paper documents that include identifying information. And instead of throwing away or recycling paper with personal information, shred it. 
As with all crime, authorities need to know about it to stop it. So if you have been a victim of ID theft, report it. It may not be solved right away, but the more people that report it, the greater the chance that it is that we're going to be able to find the offender and stop other people from being victimized. So stand up against this devastating crime. For more information on how to protect yourself from identity theft, visit AARP's Fraud Watch Network website at aarp.org slash fraudwatchnetwork. Consider signing up to become a fraud fighter. You'll receive regular alerts on the latest scams and become part of an army of fraud fighters who are saying no more to con artists, criminals, and thieves. Together, we can fight identity theft. Start by protecting your good name and your good credit today.